Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you for being here this weekend as part of our Juneteenth celebration. The Mariners are proud to recognize Juneteenth, a holiday marked by the emancipation of enslaved African Americans in the United States. It was 157 years ago that word finally reached Galveston, Texas, that slaves were free, marking the final Confederate state to abolish slavery two and a half years following Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. Since 1865, Juneteenth has served as a unifying holiday and celebration of freedom with black friends, family, and allies. Last year, President Joe Biden declared Juneteenth a federal holiday, forever marking its importance. This historic ruling is the first day to be approved as a federal holiday since Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day in 1983. We thank you for joining us for our weekend of Juneteenth celebrations at T-Mobile Park as we salute the Negro League, the Seattle Steelheads, and all the difference makers that came before us that have made our communities and game so special. As we continue our salute to the Negro Leagues and Juneteenth weekend celebrations, we're excited to welcome a number of special guests on field for a Generations of the Game roundtable discussion presented by Microsoft. So now let's send it down to our host, Dave Sim. John, thank you. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Glad you could join us for this great occasion here. Our Juneteenth celebration is presented by Microsoft as we remember the history and the impact the ball players from over a century ago had on the game of baseball and on the future generations of African Americans. Now we're proud to share with you this afternoon Generations of the Game Roundtable. It's presented by Microsoft as we gather fantastic ball players from the past, present, and the future. And we start by introducing a future star. 13-year-old shortstop from Federal Way has been playing the game that he loves so much for the last nine years, including as a part of Baseball Beyond Borders program. He's a class of 2026 member of the Hometown Nine, the Mariners Fellowship Program, designed to address barriers frequently encountered by student athletes, especially young people of color. Please say hello to Kingston Edwards. Yeah, that's it. Next, a representative of the present. You know the shortstop from his slick glove work, big personality, member of the Mariners since 2019, having another big time season here in 2022. One of the leaders of the ball club, if not the leader of the ball club, please welcome Mariners gold glove shortstop, number three, J.P. Crawford. Love the baby blue shoes, man. Rock it, rock it well, my man. We head back to the past with three great black players in Mariners history. First, a member of the Mariners for three seasons from 03 to 05, across a 13-year big league career, compiled more than 1,700 hits. Now a member of the Giants broadcast team, please welcome back former MLB All-Star Randy Wynn. Next, one of the best utility men in Mariners history, played five of his 19 big league season with the Mariners, key contributor during the 01 season when the club won a major league record 116 games. You can hear him now as a member of the Rangers broadcast team. Join us in welcoming back Mark McLemore. And one of the greatest infielders in Mariners history, spent 10 seasons with the ball club in the 80s and 90s, two-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glove Award winner, recognizable face and voice on MLB Network, and I had the pleasure of working yesterday's game one of the double dip with him, good friend Harold Reynolds. All right, fellas, here we go. Appreciate you joining, joining us for a roundtable discussion. Here to talk about the generations of the game, especially a tip, the cap to those who came before us. Let's start with you, H. Uh, you played in the 80s. How different was the league then in terms of racial components compared to now? Well, playing in the 80s, um, my first call-up in September 83, I think we had 15 African-American players on the Mariners, and that was prevalent around the whole league. Um, and we were coming off the, mainly off the 70s, when we had so many black players, and it was just 
you go back even further, you connect the Negro Leagues on through. And so that was kind of the beginning and the bridge. It started to drop a little bit later, but at, when I was coming up, that was the premier sport in the country, and that's why you played it. And then came along Mark's group after that. And I think you guys had an awful lot, too. Yeah, we had an awful lot. I came up with the uh, California Angels. They were the California Angels then uh, in 1986. And I was very blessed to come up with I can't, I can't some Hall of Famers, some black <laughs> Hall of Famers. My first locker mate was Reggie Jackson. Uh, I, George Hendrick was there. Uh, Rupert Jones was there. So we, I, I had a very uh, big influence when I got to the big leagues of having the luxury of black players on my team and then going to places like New York, Willie Randolph was there, uh, Kansas City with Frank White. They would all make sure that I was taken care of. And I, at that time, my first time in the big leagues, I was a fanboy. So I'm seeing these greats that I watched <laughs> grow up and I got to meet them, but they, they were seeking me out to introduce themselves to me because I was just getting to the big leagues. So I, I had a great experience. Uh, JP, what did it mean to get to uh, wear Seattle Steelhead uh, uniform over the past couple of years, especially uh, when you hit a grand slam in that uniform? recently oh it's an honor to wear that you know to celebrate the day um it means a lot to me because without everyone going what they went through we wouldn't be here today um and i think that should be our sunday jersey let's keep them you guys hear that up there let's keep those steelhead jerseys huh yeah, it's a great look there's no question about it randy what about you your experience as an african-american in major league ball night uh, for your during the course of your time you know, what kind of changes, what did, what did you see during that, uh, during your time in the bigs? Well, there was definitely big changes. You know, Harold mentioned, I think, uh, he said it was like 15% African-American players. And when I got in the league, it was below 10%. Torrey Hunter, Hunter, who's a peer of mine, friend of mine, like towards the end of our careers, he was one of the guys that was really talking about the numbers of African-American players and how they're dwindling. When I fell in love with this game as a junior high kid, you know, late 70s, early 80s, there was lots of role models, black players that you could look at. Ricky Henderson, the guy we were talking about at breakfast, that was a guy, I imitated his stance. That was a guy I wanted to be. When I'm playing strikeout with my brother at the house, I wanted to be Ricky Henderson. I wanted to be Fred McGriff. Um, I was lucky enough to play with Fred. But as my career went on, the numbers of black players steadily decreased. Yeah. Hey, real quick, I didn't say 15%. I said 15 players. players. Oh, yeah. So I'm looking at Darnell Coles, Dave Henderson, Steve Henderson, Phil. Al Cowens, Phil Bradley. Uh, let me think. Yeah, I got Hindu in there. Uh, let me go on and on and on and on. But there's a number of guys. A Ricky lot. Henderson. That's I mean, Ricky uh, Nelson. I can go on and on and on. I'm forgetting the names right now. But yeah, that was yeah. the sport to play. Yeah, I got you. Kingston, uh, you're sitting next to a big league shortstop. And you hope to be one one day. Uh, what what can you do and, and what can we do to get more you know, future generations of the black kids and people of color, get them into the sport? Um. First off, the MLB can take part in showing up to more um, inner city games and Little League games, because as a kid, that inspired me, just seeing Robinson Cano all the time. Um, something else that they can do is uh, just advertising more of the people of color in the MLB. Yeah, that, that's a good call there. Go ahead, Kingston. Give that young man a hand. 13 yeah, well down done. here in front of all you. Young man, good awesome. stuff. Good job, man. Harold, you know, when you work at uh, MLB Network, why is it so important in 2020 for Major League Baseball to begin, uh, that began recognizing the Negro Leagues as a Major League? Well, the Negro Leagues is a connection of our sport. It's just so important to it. I think baseball's done an amazing job of, of reaching back into the history. And a lot of times we celebrate Jackie Robinson Day, but we've gone further. And, and this sport, lends to its diversity. We have the first time around, we have female coaches in the big leagues, give them a hand. You know, that's a big step in the game. Ton of Latin players, international. We have one of the greatest players in baseball right now, it comes from Japan, Mr. Shohei Otani. He's playing on the other club, but he deserves a hand. You know, just breaking barriers is what the sport is about.
JP, let me get back to you real quick. You and your teammates, you guys have stood up a lot a couple of years ago. Social justice, most recently in the effort to end gun violence. What's the responsibility of current major leaguers to have a voice on such important topics? Um, yeah, we got to use our voice as a platform. Um, we have more access to everything. Um, more people see our stuff on the social media. So I think we got to use our voice and we got to really step up if we want to see a change. Yeah. Let's wrap it up with this. Mark and Randy. Randy, let me start with you. What's your hope for JP and his teammates and the current generation of professional black players? What's your hope for, for JP and his teammates and this current generation of professional black uh, ball players? Well, I hope that they continue to use their platform, use their voice to promote messages of social justice, fairness, equality. So I, I applaud them for what they've done and using that platform. But also being a role model for the younger kids to show the kids that baseball is fun and baseball is a wonderful sport, so just continue to go out there, play the game at a high level, have fun, and using your platform and using your voice. Yeah, I, I think the players today have a, a unique opportunity uh, to reach people. Everybody has a cell phone, so you have access to the world instantly. Um, you can do it with the help, you know, through Major League Baseball, your particular club, or just on your own. So. They, they have a, u a unique opportunity, and I think a lot of players are taking advantage of that. I know the uh, Players Alliance is, is a group that formed a few years ago, and I know they're doing a lot of work around the league and around different communities in the country, so I, I think they're doing a, a pretty good job of it. But I do think Major League Baseball has a very big part in this yeah. because they've got the biggest reach, obviously. So uh, they need to be behind whatever movement uh, that's being done. Good stuff. Kingston, you're joined by three big league broadcasters right here, and I uh, got some information that you're going to be jumping on the mic a little bit later to announce the Mariners batters today. You pretty excited for it? You ready to go? I am extremely excited. It'll be fun. Hey, guys. Appreciate you guys being here. Kingston, JP, Randy, Mark, H. I'm Dave Sims. Let's go Mariners, huh? Happy Father's Day, everybody. Happy Juneteenth.